Hey everybody, this is Ashton and Jordan from Show Me Vegas, and today's video comes from Mandalay Bay. Now you might be getting tired of Mandalay Bay videos, and if you are, I promise this is the last one. I love taking you guys on walkthroughs of properties, and that's what today's video is. 15 minutes or less, everything you need to see at Mandalay Bay. Come walk with us through Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino. So we start the walkthrough, as always, right outside the main valet. Hey, from time to time, we're going to pull up a map onto the screen like this to help you orient yourself with the property and figure out where we are. Inside the main doors, you find this beautiful lobby. The decor really is reminiscent of the Art Deco period, kind of coupled with the tropical theme of Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay opened on March 2nd, 1999. It has more than 3,200 rooms stretched across 43 stories. The hotel cost more than $900 million to build and interestingly it was developed by Circus Circus Enterprises who also built Luxor and Excalibur next door. Now don't let the age of Mandalay Bay fool you, every room in the house has been remodeled since 2015, actually some as recently as just this year. As we get to the end of the registration desk you see a hallway to your left, that's how you get to the Four Seasons. The Four Seasons Hotel occupies five floors of Mandalay Bay's Hotel Tower and it is a five diamond award winning hotel. As we shoot back across the lobby here, you see a retail store on the left that was closed. That was closed for our entire stay in October 2021. We head back over this way, past the main doors, and down here you'll see the entrance to beach level. These escalators right here take you downstairs to what they call beach level. Beach level is home to the spa and the pool complex. I also understand there's a jogging track down there, but I wouldn't know anything about that. Alright, that's me coming out of the VIP lounge. Hey, it's time to head into the casino. To get to the casino from the main lobby, you're going to cross through this area. This is the elevator lobby with three sets of elevators to take you to the various floors. From there, you're going to head this way past this convenience store and you can see the casino right ahead. Here's what it looks like on the map. Once you're into the casino, the first restaurant you're going to see on the property is the Seabreeze Cafe. That's right here on the left. That's a casual American cafe. Right past that, you'll find the Noodle Shop. That's an affordable, casual Asian eatery. And then right past that on the left, you're going to find the Crystal Room. That is the High Limit Gaming Area. Heading toward the southwest corner of the casino, you'll see what used to be the Bayside Buffet. Now this buffet shut down when COVID hit and it was closed permanently sometime thereafter. You can see they even took the lettering down off the sign. That's probably ready for redevelopment now. 
Now getting back into this area, this is where most of the restaurants are. You see Citizen's Kitchen and Bar, that's a casual American uh, dining option. We ate brunch there one day, weren't terribly impressed, but it was a fork. And then on the left you'll see Ariol, that is a pricey French restaurant. It's famous for this wine vault where their employees will repel up and down this structure here to retrieve your bottle of wine. If you get a chance to see that in action, it is really cool. Directly across from that on the right is Kumi, a Japanese restaurant. And then up on the left is Libertine Social. That's a casual American restaurant by chef Sean McLean. He's had numerous restaurants in Las Vegas. All of the ones we've eaten at have been really good, although we haven't had a chance to try that one yet. Past that is Mandalay Bay's flagship restaurant, if you will. It's Strip Steak. Now this is a Michael Mina Steakhouse, and we had a chance to eat there during our stay, and it was absolutely phenomenal. We loved it so much, we made a video about it. Check that one out, it's out there on the channel. Right past that is a Starbucks, and then it's on into the convention center. The first thing you'll find inside the convention center is the entrance to the Michelob Ultra Arena. That's a 12,000 seat venue that's home to the Las Vegas Aces of the WNBA. It also hosts a lot of concerts, boxing matches, and UFC events. And as we take a peek outside this window, you see Mandalay Bay Beach. Mandalay Bay Beach is the pool complex. It covers over 11 acres of land. It has a wave pool, various other pools, a lazy river. There's also an adults only, topless optional pool. There's also daylight beach club. So one of the best pool scenes in all of Vegas is right here at Mandalay Bay. Moving deeper into the convention center now, you'll see Border Grill on the left. That's an upscale Mexican restaurant, famous for their Sunday brunch where you can get unlimited small plates. We'd love to try that out, we still haven't had a chance. As you get deeper into the convention center, you pass the Wedding Chapel, and now we're headed toward Mandalay Bay's food court. Now with this food court tucked so far back here in the property, you get the feeling that this thing is aimed much more at conventioneers than it is hotel guests, but it is a, an option for quick, cheap eats if you're staying at the hotel. It's got a Subway, a Nathan's, a uh, Bonanno's, pretty much everything you typically find in a hotel food court. The last thing to see at the end of the convention center here is the Shark Reef. The Shark Reef is the aquarium at Mandalay Bay. We've done this a couple of times. It's pretty neat. It would be more fun if you had kids, so a nice family-friendly activity. Now, tickets aren't terribly cheap. They range from as low as $24 for kids on up to as high as $36 for adults. But now let's skip quickly back to the edge of the casino and show you more of the property. As we get back toward the edge of the casino floor, that's Rhythm and Riffs there on the right. That's a cool bar lounge with a uh, big stage and they do a lot of live music there. You can usually hear the live music playing across the casino floor. To the left is Lupo, that's an Italian restaurant by Wolfgang Puck. Comes pretty highly recommended, although we've never tried it. To our left there is how you get to the parking garage. You see a construction wall there where they are putting in a new restaurant. There used to be a restaurant there, a Russian restaurant called Red Square that we ate at a few years ago and absolutely loved, but it's now gone. We pass by a yet another newsstand and now you can see what Rhythm and Riffs looks like from the casino side. As we get into the casino, you'll see the cashier and the M-Life desk to the left there. One of the main table pits is coming up on your right. The casino in Mandalay Bay is huge, but it's very spacious. You don't feel cramped. It's usually pretty busy, but it's not overly busy. If you're a poker player, you'll be excited to see this. Mandalay Bay still has a functioning poker room. I know those are becoming more and more rare on the Strip. That's located right outside the Bet MGM Sportsbook, which is one of the better sportsbooks on the Strip. You can see the sports book is pretty spacious. There is a small grill inside there to the left, and then there's also this bar and lounge on the right here. 
where you can sit, have a drink, and catch the sports action. As you see on the map, we're now into the northwest corner of the casino. Here's where you're going to find the hall that leads to Delano, Las Vegas. Delano is a separate tower. It's actually a separate hotel. It opened in 2003. It's an all suites property without its own casino, but as you see here, it connects directly to the Mandalay Bay Casino. Also on that hallway, you're going to find the MJ1 Theater. That's MJ1 by Cirque du Soleil. We've seen that show twice. Can't recommend it enough. If you like Michael Jackson's music, you definitely need to see the show. In this corner of the casino, you find the entrance to the shops at Mandalay Place. That's a sky bridge and shopping mall that connects Mandalay Bay indoors to Luxor. There's a lot of bars, restaurants, and shops, and we'll take you upstairs to show you what there is. Almost right away you'll find 1923, that's a speakeasy style bourbon bar. We visited on our first night and it had a really cool atmosphere with live entertainment on the weekends. A really nice place to stop in and have a drink. Up ahead on the left you'll find Rira, that's the Irish pub at Mandalay Bay. It's actually open for all three meals and we had a great breakfast in there believe it or not. It also has a stage where they do a lot of live entertainment. Highly recommended if you're staying at Mandalay Bay, go visit Rira. Still further down you'll find Hugh Song's Cantina, that's a Mexican restaurant. Just ahead of that used to be the burger bar, although it looks like that may be closed for good. And then just ahead of that on the left, before you get to Luxor, is Slice of Vegas. That's a pizza joint that we still have yet to be able to try. You can see ahead we've almost made it to Luxor, so we're going to flip back around and head back to the Mandalay Bay Casino. On this side you've got the House of Blues restaurant and bar. That sits right outside the House of Blues Music Hall, which is kind of downstairs and uh, hosts a lot of concerts including Santana a lot of the time. We had breakfast actually at House of Blues and it was fantastic, one of the best values we found on the property. Skipping ahead to the northeast corner of the casino you'll find the Mandalay Bay tram station. It's just to the left and up a set of escalators. The tram connects Mandalay Bay to Excalibur with one stop at Luxor in between. That's a great option to save you some steps if you're staying at Mandalay Bay or if you just want to visit. We're getting close to back where we started. One last thing you'll see here on the left is Hazel Coffee and Cocktails. That's a really cool looking lounge that serves coffee in the mornings, cocktails the rest of the day. We tried to visit three separate times, found it closed every time, so we were pretty bummed out that we didn't get to try it, but it's a really pretty looking lounge on the casino floor. So now we are back where we started near the elevator lobby. We pretty much stuck to the perimeter of the casino, so now we'll take you right into the middle of the casino so you can see what that looks like as well. The centerpiece of the casino is this right here. This is Eye Candy Lounge. That is a really neat kind of center bar in the middle of the casino floor. There was live entertainment going on in there on the weekends. A really cool hip place to stop and have a drink. Hey, that's pretty much it for this tour of Mandalay Bay. We hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have plenty of other videos out there, some about Mandalay Bay and plenty of others of other Las Vegas properties. Hey, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.